Let's go to uh, 21, 1 through 3. Matthew 21, 1 through 3. Hold up our Bible. This is my Bible. I have what it says. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I'm about to receive incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When I was um, in prayer, I was reading this scripture here. It says, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and would come to Bethany unto the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two disciples, saying unto them, go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. In the Amplified, it says, well, let's read the Amplified. It's the first two verses, the first, the second verse, saying to them, go into the village that is opposite you, and once you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall reply, the Lord needs them. So I guess if my message or uh, the word I'm bringing forward uh, could be anything tonight, the Lord have need of you. The Lord have need of you. I have three people that I want to talk about tonight. The three will be Moses, Joseph, and Jonah. Three people that had three things in common. The Lord had need of them. Let's go to the Moses. To, we'll kind of fast forward it. Moses, he thought he was running from the call of God on his life and ran right into what God wanted him to do, to lead his people out of bondage. Joseph, everything he went through led him to his calling. And Jonah, of course, running from his calling. Of course, how many people know we can't run when God have need of you? So in, in, now, in Exodus, if y'all want to read it, we'll fast forward for the sake of time. We'll just kind of go through this here. Well, we know that Moses' mother, at, at, that, time, at that time, she had kept Moses as long as she could for three months. And Pharaoh had decreed to kill all the male children. So at that time, her mother implemented something to save her son. She put him in a basket and put him on the river. And so at that time, when, she, when the Egyptian, um, he grew up, well, what happened, let me slow down. Moses was on the river, you know, he's a little boy. And at that time, while he was going, uh, during that time, he saw that um, it was Pharaoh's daughter that was in the water. She was bathing at that time. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, if he would have been a day late, but it was ordained, it was appointed time. And so I thought to myself, I said, hmm, if it had been a day before or the day after, but at that time she was there bathing, sent a handmaiden to go get Moses. There he, she raised Moses up. Okay. So at that time when she raised Moses up, when Moses got old enough, he starts seeing the affliction of the people. He ended up killing a man. Okay? Next it does. And he fled to Midian. There he met his wife, Zipporah. Now remember, Moses was tending his business, wasn't messing with nobody, so he thought, on the backside of the desert. How many know it don't matter where you are when God read it for you? He's on the backside of the desert now, on the backside. But remember, it was a plan in place all along for him. Like God said, even in, in my womb where you call. It had been a plan for Moses. And it so happened that she happened to be in the water at that ordained time to get him out to save him. Okay. Then he minded his own business. We could go to that. Let's look at that. I like that part. That's in Matthew. I mean, Exodus. I'm sorry. Exodus 1 through 4. Exodus 3, 1 through 4. I had to say it again. God is awesome. Yes, I'm glad to God. Exodus 3, 1 through 4. 
Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called him. How many know when God called your name, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're going to stop and answer the call. Amen. With Moses, what got his attention was the bush. The bush was burning and it wasn't consumed. So it doesn't matter what's going on in our life when God is ready for you. He had seen the affliction of his people and he had Moses. He wanted to use Moses to deliver his people. Another person is Joseph. Joseph, in Genesis, you can read it in 37. Of course, everybody knows the story of Joseph. His brothers hated him, and sometimes we have the haters, and that pushes toward our destiny, and that's okay. Because okay. <laughs> okay. he, he said he prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies, so that let me know I have to have, so he got to have some enemies to prepare the table so they can see when he get ready to do his thing. Okay. So... <laughs> His father, it was, he was fa his father's favorite, and sometimes it's within your own family, it's sad to say. And so, again, another plan was put together with Joseph. What the devil meant for bad, God brought it to fruition. Joseph was sold into slavery, from slavery, went into this man's house that he was then accused of rape. So Joseph went through so much, and it didn't look like the promise, because he said, nah, I know my brother's supposed to be bound down, and... They're going to do this here. But how many know each one of these men, God was with them. And God had a plan for their lives. Yeah. Now with Joseph, I know he probably thought this definitely don't look like it. Let's go to Romans 8 and 28. Thank you, Lord. And these, and these three people had everything in common. God was with them, and God wanted to use them. Each situation different now. But each time it was a plan, and it was predained by God. So let's go to Romans 8 and 28. I'll read it out the Amplified. We are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan. That's what I'm fitting into a plan for, for good, too, and for those who love God and are called accord to his design and his purpose. And how many people know that even with Moses, it was a plan. With Joseph, it was a plan. And God had it all ordained for such a time, for that time. Now we're going to Jonah. I love the story of Jonah. You know how when you're running? <laughs> you know when you're running? And God allowed some things to go on with Jonah. Everybody know the story of Jonah, how he ran. God told him to do one thing. Jonah wanted to do something else. He on the ship. Fast forward it. The men say, what's going on this ship? Somebody done, done something. They running from the Lord. And Jonah had to bust himself out. He said, it's me. He said, yeah, throw him overboard. But again, let me go to that scripture. Hold on. Jonah. Hold on, Jonah. I just want to look at, I could, it's kind of long, but he got thrown off the boat, but the 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. He prepared that fish. Same way with Moses. He prepared for that woman to be at there at that time. Just like for Joseph, all that was preparation. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah up. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. By that time, God asked him again, I want you to go to Nineveh the second time. Oh, he was ready by the end. He's ready by the end, so he spit him up, and so there it was. So we have three different people, three different encounters with the Lord, and the Lord was with each of them to deliver the people from bondage, with, with Joseph to save, uh, uh, save uh, from the famine for seven years and the spare city in Nineveh. Joseph and Jonah, so he wants to use each one of you all as well. 
Each one of us could be in our comfort zone. How many know it's, it's, it feels good when it's comfortable? We could be tied up and entangled up in something, but how many people know when you can't lose something, God will make it loose you? Okay. I'm a living witness. <laughs> I was on the job for 16 years, 17 years or whatever, but when God ready, he's going to do what he needs to do. He's going to do what he needs to do. Every situation is different. Every calling is different on each one of our lives. But God has need of each one of us for such a time as this. For such a time as this. And we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient for the call of God that's on our life. We all go through, but when God is ready for us, we have to answer the call. We have to answer the call. It doesn't matter what you're doing. And when God says it's time, it's time. Because everybody likes to be in their comfort zone, what they're used to doing, what they want to do. But God, each one of you all in here, God has need of you, like Brother Clint was saying. Each person, God has ordained appointment for each one of you. Somebody needs to be saved. Somebody needs to be delivered. And somebody needs to be set free. I was also reading. And I said, since all three of them, God was with them, all three had a purpose, a desired end, and all three had a destiny, fate. When purpose and destiny kiss, things happen. God's plan come together. So it is with us. We have a purpose and we have a destiny. And some of us are getting ready to be thrust into that destiny, into that purpose. Because we are in the last days. And God really, really needs us to be obedient in these last days. And it's, it's good we go to church. Praise the Lord. And we get the word. Praise the Lord. But it is time. It is time to get out. And God will call circumstances to thrust you into your destiny. Just like Moses. Just like Jonah. Just like Joseph. It was a plan in place. God has something in each situation for those people for such a time. For Moses to deliver the people. He had saw the affliction. He heard the cry. He used Moses. Moses made all types of excuses. I stutter. You know, okay, well, I got somebody that's going to help you. We, we always have excuses. You know, Joseph, he, he didn't know what was going on. He just like stumbled into, well, what's going on here? And went through one thing after another. But in the end, he had the victory. He was over it all. He was the head and not the tail. Jonah, running. Each situation is different now. Got to see which situation each person is in. Jonah, okay, all right. So he's going to try to run. How are you going to run from God? Well, he's everywhere. So it's time for us to be busy about our father's business in these last days. You know, we want to see the blind eyes open. We want to see people in wheelchairs getting up. We want to see the demonstration of God's power. The word is here. We, we hear it all the time. But it's time for God wants to demonstrate. He wants to work through each one of us. He wants to work through each one of us. If it's discernment, he wants to turn that up. Intensify it. Prophecy, he wants to turn that up even the more. Word of knowledge, he wants to turn that up even the more. For such a time as this here. And just like he used all of these in the Bible, he has no respect to persons. But we have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to be ready to, when God wakes us up at 2 or 3 in the morning, to say, yeah, Lord, your servant here, here I am. What do you need for me, God? What is it for today that you need for me to do? Each day we should be saying, Lord, just one. Fix something where I'll come across one person to tell them about the Lord. It was a minister ministering one time, and he said, this man went to hell. And every day this man would be, and he, was, and he said, what cursed that man so much? He say, he say, he's just cussing. He's in hell, and the other man was in heaven or something, and it's the story I'd heard. And he said, because every day I was with him, and he never did tell me about Jesus. It was kind of like, wow, really? That's real. In your inner circle, people you know, you know they need the Lord. I remember when I got saved in 1983, I said, ooh, we was on our way going to hell, but we going to heaven. I, you know, that fire, that zeal when you first get saved, 
You want everybody to be saved. Everybody, you touching everything. Oh, yeah, huh, huh, rebuke it and I bind it. Uh, yeah, that's why God want to bring us back. We've, 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 we've left our first love. And God wants to get us back to that place. Like, you remember when we first got saved? Oh, I tell them, all my friends, they thought, well, what the? Oh, yeah, yeah, we was going to heaven. We were going to heaven. I want everybody saved. You understand? And God, that's what I pray. God, give us a hunger for the lost. Because that's what you're commissioned, to seek and save. You know, we get in the word, but the, the sick need the physician, not us. Not us. Not us. On Wednesdays, it ought to be full. Sundays, I mean, God want to demonstrate his power, y'all. And I'm ready. Not church as usual. Something different. Whatever you want to do, God, have your way. However you want to do it. This is your church. This is your service. Have your way. And I'm looking out in the audience, so many, so all of y'all so anointed of God, full of the power of God. And I just want to encourage you on today. And I know by the Spirit of God, God said, there's some things that are going to happen in some of y'all's lives that's going to thrust you, thrust you into your destiny. I was looking up the word. I was looking up the word purpose. It's a desired end, and destiny is fate. And thrust means to push forward, to push forward. Sometimes we need that push. Sometimes we need that push. You know, everybody, we shouldn't be sitting on anything that God has given us to do. As he used the people in the Bible, he so wants to use us. You know, when people come in here, if they in wheelchairs or whatever it is, we should be able to go with the same spirit and lay hands on them. We have that power living in us. So I want to encourage each one of you all today. The Lord have need of you in such a time as this. Please allow him to do it. Don't wait till things happen. And you got to be forced to. But just do it on your own. Wherever you are, on your job or wherever, if somebody needs to be saved there, you're on assignment. You're there with a mandate for something. Now I was working, I was like, you know the Lord, you know Jesus. You know, I mean, hey, all I just presented to you, it ain't on me no more. And let your light so shine. And let them see Jesus. You can't talk one thing and live something else. They, people want realness. They haven't had enough. And then the first thing they say, I don't go to church because there's some fake people in church. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God have you. They're blessed because you own that job. And you say, well, Lord, you, a good man steps are ordered by, by God. So wherever you are, on whatever occupation or whether you're not on occupation. Because I told the Lord when it happened to me, I said, God, what are you doing? He said, you're going to see. Little by little, he's been revealing it. And, you know, I said, Lord, thank you. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Wherever you lead, I, hey, whatever you want. I'm telling y'all, I'll be up 2, 3 in the morning, can't sleep. I say, oh, God, what is it? 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 I can't go to sleep. Just all hyped up. You know, I went to a conference this weekend, and the word came forth. And I said, oh, my God, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, for such a time as this. And each one of y'all, God has called y'all to do so much. And it's not man's mandate. This is what God saying. We have to obey God and not man. Just like Moses on the backside. But then he was moved to the forefront. It's your time. It's your season. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. I see so many gifts in here. And God is ready to enhance that. And God is ready to move in a mighty, mighty way. And I want y'all to be encouraged on today. Don't be afraid. What you scared of? What you scared of? The Lord say, tell them they just need to come closer. Just come closer. Come closer. He's ready to do a mighty work here at Faith Christian Center Church. 
here in this body. Don't send them nowhere else. Send them here. But we have to be ready. It's so many hurting people. I tell you, you know, you can just stop anywhere and people just get to pouring their hearts out and you be like, wow. Mm -hmm. And they want realness too. And we have to get out of our comfort zone. It's time. It's time. It's time to go forth. It's time to go forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.